Hey guys, it's God Bars here, the self-proclaimed hip-hop historian, and this is the 44th episode of my series where I grab a vinyl from my collection, talk about why I love it, what influence it had, and what its place is in the grand scheme of hip-hop. While rap music was expanding rapidly in the 90s, leading to quality projects from all over, New York was still undoubtedly the mecca of hip-hop at the time. Due to this, there's a slightly disproportionate amount of classics from New York compared to the South or even the West. But again, that in no way means there aren't dozens or even hundreds of classics from those respective areas. I've been trying to intersperse the boom bap stuff with some Southern and West Coast releases, and I'm probably going to try to do that with the Midwest a bit more. Since every other album is going to be a New York one, there's still going to be a higher amount of those than any other place. But I think I did a pretty good job of not making the selections come off as too biased or anything. Despite the East Coast traditional dominance in the genre, the early to mid 90s saw them get in this sort of tug of war with the West, as they were the first area outside of NY to truly rival them in impact. Of course, California already had plenty of notable figures in the 80s, like Ice-T, Shock G, and the Digital Underground, and they'd even had platinum-selling megastars in the form of MC Hammer. But as influential and important as those names were to the West, they couldn't really hold a candle to the East when it came to an actual movement. Until the early 90s, that is, when the G-Funk sound was being developed and rapidly gaining popularity, there were still many artists who chose not to follow in the steps of other West Coast acts at the time, like Far Side, Freestyle Fellowship, Souls of Mischief, and Razkaz. But just a handful of the projects that really helped establish the G-Funk scene were of course the Chronic, Doggy Style, Quick is the Name, Lethal Injection, America's Nightmare, in a major way, and of course, All Eyes on Me. By 1995, there was a constant back and forth with classics coming from both sides outside of the infamous. Just some of the legendary boom bap LPs released in that year included Liquid Swords, Only Built for Cuban Links, Return to the 36 Chambers, Sitting on Chrome, as well as Smith & Wesson's debut, Do or Die by AZ and KRS-One's self-titled album of the same name. But out of all the game-changing East Coast releases that decade, to me Mob Deep's second album is the first thing that comes to my head when I hear anything about 90s New York boom bap. So while it isn't an album that I return to quite as much as something like Iron Man or The Black Moon's first album, I'd put it up there with Illmatic and Ready to Die in terms of defining the sound and culture. While Havoc and Prodigy show great promise and potential on their debut, Juvenile Hell, they made a drastic improvement going into their second album, which reeled newer fans in with a staggering group of features. It then kept them hooked with Havoc's timeless instrumentals, more than one of which have gone down in the Hall of Fame for hip-hop beats. Mixed with Havoc and P's grimy, authentic bars, the infamous became a force that dominated the time period, and not only have the beats for Survival of the Fittest and Shook Ones Part 2 gone down as two of the most recognizable samples ever, but the way Havoc stretched and flipped the material was pretty groundbreaking and innovative. They would continue on their hot streak the following year with Hell on Earth, which might actually be my favorite Love Deep album, though I unfortunately haven't been able to find it on vinyl at the time of this video. After that, they proceeded to release Murder Music in 1999, which is another project loaded with stellar beats and fiery verses. Their next album in 2001 is generally considered a lull by fans, and I have to agree, as Infamy just didn't really hold up to the standards the first Mob Deep album set, in my opinion. However, the release after this one, 2004's America's Nightmare, is a refreshing return to form that still gave a new life to Havoc and Prodigy's aging sound. Through the forward-thinking production of The Alchemist, who really made a name for himself as a producer through these early days with Mob Deep. Not to be confused with the Spice One album I mentioned earlier with the same name, which is spelled differently, though both are amazing projects in their own right. Another thing that made the infamous stand out amongst their discography was the impressive group of features I referenced earlier. These included Nas, Ghostface, and Raekwon from Wu 
Wu-Tang, Big Noid, Crystal Johnson, and Q-Tip, who also is the only other person to contribute beats to the project outside of Havoc, with there being three tracks on here that were either produced or co-produced by Tip under his alias The Abstract. Eye for an Eye was a song I was obsessed with when I was younger. I actually did a cover of it that's probably still on SoundCloud somewhere. Not only is it one of the most sinister beats on the whole album, but it never gets old hearing Prodigy, Raekwon, and Nas trading off killer verses. Especially Nas, who was already on a fire feature run that year, but this might be my favorite feature he's ever done, personally. I love the way he first comes in on this track, Spitting, a drug dealer's dream, stash cream, keys on a triple beam, 500 SL green, 95 nickel gleam, condominium, thug dressed like a gentleman, tailor-made ostrich, Chanel for my woman friend. But my favorite part of this verse is a couple lines later where he gives the type of imagery barely any MCs were even considering at the time. This being, New York metropolis, the bridge brings apocalypse, shoot at the clouds, feels like the holy beast is watching us, madman, my sanity is gone inside an hourglass, gun inside my bad hand, I sliced it trying to bag grams. While this isn't the most technical album in the genre, the minimal production would be ruined if you layered a bunch of noises on top of it. I feel like the dusty, authentic feel would be lost if everything here was extremely polished, or if every bar was ridiculously flashy and dense. By letting these instrumentals and verses breathe and not overcooking them, it lets you really focus on what they're saying. The aesthetic of the album couldn't match the prototypical boom bap image any better, and that's because this album was so essential in the scene's development. It totally transports you to Queensbridge, and you can picture the situations and stories they paint since they're so vivid and authentic. Overall, this is another one of those classics that has so many famous and beloved moments. I have to reiterate the top three tracks I name are just personal preference, and there's not one remotely whack song anywhere on this thing. The songs I want to give honorable mentions are actually going to include Survival of the Fittest and Shook Ones Part 2, because while they're virtually perfect songs, obviously they're so heavily played that it's hard for me at least to enjoy them quite as much as some of the other tracks here. I do want to shout out a couple other songs though, like Give Up the Goods, Just Step, Temperatures Rising, and Drink Away the Pain situations. My three main favorites would have to be Eye for an Eye, Your Beef is Mine's, Right Back at You, and Cradle to the Grave. Thank you for watching my 44th video. I'm gonna stay in New York for this next one just because, as I mentioned earlier, I have an excess of those. Well, I'm not switching coasts for that next video. After that, I'm gonna start alternating every other one because now I've just about knocked out enough of the New York landmarks to get away with doing them one every other video. The next classic was actually released the same year as The Infamous, which just further proves my point about what a stacked year it was for hip-hop, especially across the boroughs. So be sure to tune in next time to see which classic that is, as well as like, subscribe, and let me know what your favorite songs off Mob Deep's infamous second album are. Don't forget to have a great day, and I'll see you next time, okay? Alright.